Happy Sunday, everyone. Um, as you remember, about two months ago now, my truck was stolen, but uh, they did find it. I never managed to make a video about it, but I'll do it right now. So here it is. They obviously took the skull off the front uh, and they, the saddest part is they ripped all of the bumper stickers off, but it's all good. They really didn't do that much damage to it. Um, the exterior is pretty much exactly the same. They did screw up a little bit on the interior. They, they took the steering column off and they painted, they put some spray paint on the carpet, but I'm going to get the seats redone and the, uh, carpet replaced and it's pretty much good as new, but here's my conundrum. Now I have one, two, three Toyota pickups. So what happened was, um, for the last like several months, I've been looking for a pickup truck for my dad that'll be driving back to New Hampshire. Um, this coming weekend and um, then my truck was stolen so I had to look for two vehicles so I originally bought this one for my dad it's a 91 with a new engine in it new brakes new clutch no rust so it was a good find and then I was buying uh, this one for my dad uh, sorry for me and um, that one's nice. That's a 93. It's only got 60,000 miles on it. And uh, I mean, it's perfectly clean. <laughs> but right after I bought that one for my dad and I had already bought a plane ticket to fly to South Dakota to get this one and bring it back, they found mine. So uh, this truck, I replaced the engine back in January. I put a uh, rebuilt V6 right into it put a new clutch into it i rebuilt the front end rebuilt almost the entire rear end put new brakes new drive shaft tons of stuff into it and this thing's been with me everywhere it's been to all 49 landlocked states and half of canada so i couldn't justify getting rid of it and even though this one's really nice i couldn't justify keeping it and this one because they're the same exact truck just a year different um but this is I mean, finding a truck like this with 60,000 miles is super rare. So I talked to my dad and I said, hey dad, why don't I just go ahead and still buy this one in South Dakota for you? Cause it's a great find and I'll resell the one that I already bought for you. So I went from zero to three trucks inside a week. Um, but I've actually got someone coming to look at this one in a few minutes here. Hopefully I'll sell it um, and then I'm driving this one back to New Hampshire uh, this coming weekend and then fixing this one back up to, uh, you know, it's a ri original state, I guess. I'm going to give it a new paint job, a little bit of body work and some interior work that I already discussed. But yeah, these are great trucks. They last forever. Uh, mine has over 300,000 miles on it with a brand new engine though and brand new suspension, brand new brakes, brand new clutch, all that. Um, but you know, this is one of my secrets to living a financially successful life. Buy a vehicle that is uh, trustworthy and dependent. And, you know, you'll have to, you have to learn how to fix it up yourself, which is fine. I've done a lot of stuff to it and everything's worked out pretty well. And why spend $40,000 on a new pickup truck when you can buy one for three grand and fix it up for a couple more and that's what I've done so there it is guys um, I want to talk about how they found my truck so if you remember it was stolen about two months ago and about 10 days after it was stolen I wanted to check up with the police and see what the status was on it and they told me, well, we've put it on the hot sheet and it's on the NICB. So if anyone pulls it over anywhere in the country or if it goes to an impound yard, you know, the VIN will send off a signal and they'll know it's stolen. So I was like, all right, sounds good. And then um, they uh, they told me, yeah, well, we'll tell you if we find it, but it's not really an open investigation. It's kind of, if someone reports it, then we'll let you know. Um, so my friend was searching all the databases connected to the NICB and he was telling me, Reed, there's uh, 
there's no report of your truck being stolen. Like I look it up everywhere and I'm not finding the VIN. It's not reported as stolen, not reported as missing, nothing. So there's no way they really put it on the hot sheet. And I said, I don't know what to tell you, man. That's what they told me. And he said, well, call them back and, you know, double check. Um, so I did, I called them back again and I said, hey, I just wanna make sure that you guys have the right VIN, that everything checks out. I understand there could be a mistake or, you know, over the phone, you didn't get the right number or something. And so they checked it and they said, yep, everything's fine. It's all set, we just looked. I was like, okay, good enough. <laughs> so then my friend calls me and he says, hey, guess what? Now it's on the list. Now the VIN number is showing up. And I looked it up and the report date was that same day that I had called them to make sure they had the right VIN. So they either hadn't reported it or they had the wrong number, but they didn't tell me that. They just said, oh yeah, no, it's fine. So at this point, it's been like three weeks since the truck was stolen. So I figured, okay, that thing's gone. I mean, the whoever stole it has a three week cold trail behind them. There's no way it's gonna be found now. It could be out in Montana, could be in California, could be in Mexico for all I know. Um, so I, I, I've pretty much given up hope on it and that's around the time I found the 91 that I'm in right now for my dad. And so then that red one uh, that was in South Dakota, I was ready to get it for myself. And then uh, the Thursday before I flew out to South Dakota, because I flew out to South Dakota on a Saturday, the Thursday before I was up in Idaho driving truck and my boss calls me and he says, hey, Reed, they found your truck. I was like, you have to be kidding me. So what it was, was there was a burglary and um, the, the whoever was being robbed called the police or someone saw the robbery taking place. They called the police and the police showed up and then the criminals took off and they just left the truck. And luckily I had uh, followed up with them and made sure that they had the right VIN because then when the cops went and ran the VIN, they could tell that it was stolen. Otherwise, they wouldn't have even known because it wouldn't have been on the hot sheet. They would have just sent my truck to an impound yard and it could still be sitting there and none of us would know. So um, they didn't even have my phone number, uh, even though there was a, an open case on uh, the truck. They had to call my boss because they had some connection to the address it was stolen from or something. And they said, hey, we found that guy's truck. So then he called me. And then uh, when I got back from Idaho at the end of the day, I cleaned my truck out, laid all the stuff out on the ground. And a cop came to investigate and he showed up and he obviously didn't really care what was going on. And he was like, well, I could take that computer, the iPad and the jewelry and everything else can just go in the dumpster. And he didn't even really look through anything. And right in one of the backpacks, there were some court papers. And I don't know if they were the guy, uh, if they were from the guy who stole my truck or not, but I was like, hey, are these of any interest to you? And he's like, oh yeah. And then he's like, well, I guess I should look a little more. So he looked a little more through the bags and he took a few more things. And they said, all right, if you find anything suspicious, let me know. So he hadn't even left yet. And I opened the glove box and there was a crack pipe sitting in the glove box. I was like, is this something you want? And he's like, oh, oh yeah, let me take that. And then he left and I, I still found a bowl sitting on the ground, which in, uh, you know, in Utah, we're still retarded about drugs here. I, I don't, obviously, if you guys watch me enough, I don't care about drugs at all, but he wanted any, <laughs> anything linked to the criminals to, uh, uh, to go to him or whatever. But anyway, he left and I was thinking, wow, if I ever get pulled over and I'm smuggling something, I want to get pulled over by this guy. But, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I got my truck back, but um, you know, we our tax dollars go to the police to protect us and to solve crimes like that. And I feel like they're so distracted by so many stupid laws that really shouldn't exist that keep them occupied. And they're also, you know, they're kind of corrupt and kind of lazy and there's nothing you can do because they're in unions, you can't f get them fired and there's no competition. You, I mean, I guess you could hire a private investigator or something, but the police have a monopoly on that business. And if they don't do their jobs, there's nothing you can do. And that's an actual problem in West Jordan, uh, Southern Salt Lake area. The police just don't show up and do anything. And it, it's really annoying. Uh, and if, if I hadn't followed up and been annoying 
to the police, they never would have uh, found my truck because their the number wouldn't have been on the hot sheet. So, yeah, just wanted to share that little story with you guys. I have found my truck. I'm glad to have it back. We'll see if we can get 300,000 more miles out of it. The transmission's pretty much all that's left that can go on it. But well, those are pretty easy to replace. It's got a five-speed manual transmission, which is what all these trucks have. Um, I'll just show you the interior. I'm in the 91 right now, but it's a pretty nice deal. It's got AC and it has cruise control, um, you know, five-speed four-wheel drive. These are really nice trucks. I really, my favorite type of model, wouldn't own anything else given the choice. But uh, I'll be doing a video tonight possibly with uh, Rocky Coast from Twitter. You guys might know who he is. Um, he's a libertarian, but he's very anti, like, grifter, I would say. He doesn't like people like Austin Peterson or Rand Paul um, or Thomas Massey. He thinks they're the most dangerous to our cause because they try to emulate us, but they betray us. I disagree with him. I agree with some of his critiques of those people, but I don't consider Rand Paul to be an enemy. I definitely consider him to be an ally. So we'll be uh, hashing that out on YouTube tonight. It might be live. I'm not sure. I haven't figured out how I'm going to set it up yet. But uh, stay tuned for that. And I will catch you guys on the next stream or the next episode. Stay safe. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves.